Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another episode of Learn to Play Games. We're here at CMON Expo 2018, and I'm here with Eric Lang. We're going to talk about some of the stuff that's gone on this last year, some of the new stuff coming out potentially, and just all things CMON. So thank you again, Eric, for joining us. Hey, and good to see you again, Lance. So how has this last year been for CMON, and with you stepping on as the major project developer? Uh, well, it's been exciting to say the least, right? Um, we've been... I've been with Simon now for about a, almost exactly a year, um, okay. and so most so most of the initiatives that I started uh, are you're now starting to come to light. So okay. um, we're showing gizmos here at the show and um, in a big way, and that w which is actually the first game I signed um, as Simon on I think it was my first week at the show. Okay, um, designed by the fantastic Phil Walker Harding. Um, and it was one of those games I saw it, I fell in love with it immediately, mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of the mission statement, right? Like yeah. games games, uh, games by a group of uh, gamers making what we love and putting our full passion into it. Mm -hmm. um, and just slightly fewer of it. And that's what, um, that's what we're all about right now. Okay. Yeah, it definitely looks like that's one that's going to grab table presence. You see it, you're like, ooh, I want to check that out. That looks really neat. So, Yeah, it doesn't hurt that it's a fantastic game, too. Yeah, <laughs> I, have to, I still haven't had a chance to check that one out, so I'm looking forward to trying that one at the show here. Oh, good. Um, so other than that, so how has your role changed? I mean, obviously you're a game developer now that you're basically in charge of all of that. How has your role shifted? I mean, are you still involved with game development or is it more of just like overseeing different projects or, I mean, how does that, how do you feel about that shift? Uh, well, I mean, so yeah, of course it has changed a little bit and, uh, in the way that I, uh, was expecting, um, mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> um, yes. So, uh, I mean, I just I do a little bit more management now. Um, I do uh, manage a team of seven uh, fantastic developers uh, in Brazil. And um, we do so I don't design all the games anymore, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, I, I design I still do design games. Okay. I just design fewer of them. And I'm okay. a little bit more involved uh, end to end. We're, in fact, going to announce a new game of mine co-designed with uh, Rob Davio. Um, nice. We're going to announce that tomorrow. And uh, I've been working on another big box game that's come out later. But um, yeah, so just fewer of my own games, but more involvement all through it. And um, sort of because uh, I love working on multiple projects at once, uh, I've gotten I've really fallen in love with working on uh, other people's games. OK, and so um, we've br brought in games from really good designers, some friends of mine, some promising young new talents. Mm -hmm. And we run it through our development team, which is like a well-oiled machine at this point. OK. Um, and um, I work as, uh, side by side with production as well. So we're making sure that the, the product is integrated with the gameplay as well as possible. So we make stuff that's fun to touch, fun to um, play with and um, practical as well. Right. Okay. So like we don't not just overproduce it, but make the, the, the full product the experience. OK. So I know you had some really big titles last year. Rising Sun, the new zombie side, um, Hate. Uh, what about this year? Like, what kind of things are you excited about showing off, or um, big projects that might be we might be seeing this year that you're able to talk about? What can I? T yeah. So this is this, <laughs> so it's interesting. Um, one. So you're, uh, this is going to dovetail a bit into what you asked before. What's changed? What yeah. one of the thing, biggest things that's changed is um, in in my head. Mm -hmm. It's right now. It's May 2019. Okay. Um, so I'm so far ahead that. I've sort of lost track of what's going on in the real world. So I don't actually know month by month what's okay. coming out. We put together a calendar and a plan, but mm -hmm. now I'm so far in the future. So having said that, I'm not 100% sure what I'm allowed to talk about. I okay. know, uh, I mean, I can stuff that's been announced, right? We, sure. uh, Victorian Masterminds is coming out later this year, um, mm -hmm. which is a game that uh, Antoine Boza and I designed uh, a, a, a long time ago, but... Um, originally published by Space Cowboys. Now we, uh, we've taken it. Okay. Um, we're reworking the graphic design and some of the uh, elements, but the game has been done and developed for a while. Very, very proud of it. Uh, I can't wait for it to see the market. Um, uh, nope, can't talk about that. Um, can't talk about that. <laughs> um, I know we have, okay, so we have at least one more big Kickstarter um, coming out. Um, and that, is that beside the uh, besides, Arcadia Quests one that you're working on? Um, oh, besides the writers? Oh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, yes. Um, so, um, yes. Uh, so at least two, I should say. Big, okay. really exciting, big new games. Um, uh, I have I am a co-designer on both of them. And okay. um, that's unfortunately all I can say. Yeah. Um, 
That's good news, um, though. <laughs> it's, uh, so we're doing a lot more on the Kickstarter side. We're mm-hmm. um, doing a lot more of this internally with the team. And we have a fantastic team of people, very talented. So I'm uh, working with them uh, on a fair number of projects. So okay. between this year and next year, you'll see a lot of games that are uh, that are co-designed with um, with our people in-house or just by our people in-house. And it's... Okay. Uh, I think you'll see our identity as a company and our culture as a company really come through with that. Okay. Um, with that first title you were talking about, the Victorian one, can mm-hmm. you give us a little more information on that one? Has that one really been put out too much? Like what the premise is, like what oh, yeah, uh, sure. kind of functions or game mechanics it has? Uh, is it a cooperative game, competitive? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so, there, yeah, I think there, um, there's some stuff flowing around the Internet right now, and it's all I think it's all still accurate. So... Um, uh, designed by Antoine Boza and myself, uh, okay. it is a uh, uh, it's a very thematic, uh, thematically inspired Euro style game. Um, imagine so, picture it: <clears throat> Victorian England with a bunch of oh, well, Victorian era, I guess, with a, um, a dash of steampunk and oh, nice. uh, mad science thrown in there. Okay. So Sherlock Holmes has just disappeared, and oh, you guys sweet. are all the you guys are playing all the villains that uh, he's been chasing. Now. Oh. You are free to reign terror across the uh, <laughs> across the world, and what you're doing is you're building these giant um, these giant uh, steampunk contraptions okay. um, to inspire fear and mayhem across the um, across the world. And um, the mechanically speaking, I mean, it's a very theme driven game, so it's not like we were going like, oh, we're going to make an area control game with this okay. stuff. But it, um, in retrospect, you could probably say that it's a, uh, it feels like a little bit of a twist on worker placement. You have okay. a, a little hand of agents that you're going to run around from city to city stealing resources. But you do you place a bunch of them in a different city mm-hmm. and you place them face down. There's a bluff element. There's a um, there's a bit of a second guessing element. But there's also cool resource management. You build up your ships. Uh, everything is completely asymmetrical. Uh, so everybody sh- uh, everybody's machine has a completely different play style. Okay. Um, and the the goal of the game is uh, through uh, is to gain mayhem, which you get from completing your machine, mm-hmm. or capturing buildings, or um, fi- fi- finishing evil missions. Okay. So you are villains, but it's very like cartoony, mustache twirling, okay. um, old school uh, cartoon villains. That's really cool. sounds really neat. Yeah. yeah I, I, so this was based on a story that uh, Antoine told me once when we were sitting at I, I don't even remember what was the show. We we're just kind of hang around, and he's like. He described this story. I was like, wow, that sounds like a really cool game. It's like, yeah, well, it's not a game yet. Okay. I was like, yeah, it is now because we're making it. right. <laughs> awesome. So, so one other question I was curious on, which I'm not sure if you're involved with it at all, but um, with the Kickstarters you guys are doing now mm-hmm. with some of them like Hate where it was an exclusive, is this something that Simon is going to be doing more of or even with the last one with – uh, the zombie side invader. How you had the second core set in there that was a limited run type of thing. Is this something to that fans of Simon need to be aware of that are you know wanting to get all your guys' games? Is this something that they're going to have to keep an eye out for or well, what is? Your... So I mean, I mean, so I can't. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, I can't divulge tradecraft on TV, right? Of course. But, the, but um, the I mean, we're. I mean, so needless to say, we're an industry leader in Kickstarter, right? Like sure. We, we, um, to a degree, we had a part in sort of inventing the, the format. and But mm-hmm. a big part of that is that we have to – we're continually reevaluating and reinventing our strategy for it. So um, it's safe to say that we're not going to be resting on our laurels. We're not going to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Okay. Um, we are going to try new things. And okay. um, the idea is, of course – I mean, we're a game company first. We want to make cool stuff and, yeah. and reach the audiences, the ideally reach the audiences as efficiently, efficiently as we can and to the people that the games are made for. So sure. um, that's a wide, broad philosophical way of saying I can't really tell you. But okay. um, we are – every Kickstarter that comes out is a learning experience for the next one. And okay. we are um, – just expect some cool surprises. Um, in the good way, right? We're not going to do any crazy bait and switch stuff on you, but okay. um, um, on the other hand, a little dash of the familiar, a little dash of the unexpected, that's kind of our formula. Okay. I was just curious because it seemed like, at least from my perspective, especially with Zombie Side or something like that, where it's a big title where if you miss the Kickstarter and you potentially want like the Dark Side core game, that's going to be extremely hard to come by, it sounds like, well, right. after the we've, fact. I mean, we've always had exclusives, right? That's, sure. That's... Um, that's it's part of the benefit of being of being involved in the Kickstarter, right? Because yeah. 
the I mean, I know it seems it may seem one way, but like, I mean, we we do Kickstarters as a as a test of the market. We, we, sure. wanna, we do want to gauge what the interest is in our games. Mm-hmm. Um, you never know. And we don't want to take anything for granted. Right. Sure. And we know it's Zombicide. It's going to sell something. But, sure. you know, we were taking a chance. We're t- t- uh, putting it in a new uh, in a new genre, a yeah. new setting. So we. Um, I mean, for taking that risk, we have to. We obviously have to offer some kind of incentive for um, uh, to be involved in Kickstarter. So, sure. time will tell uh, okay. the, how that does. Great. And um, I know you were talking about that. There's new titles that you guys are working on that you can't divulge anything on. But can you give any? Basic ideas on nope, nope. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. So unfortunately, based. Uh, so I know you guys. You guys are smart, and the. Um, <laughs> I, so I, I mean, I'm pretty active on Twitter, right? And sure. I've noticed that when I, when I give, when I give little hints and tidbits and stuff, no matter how oblique, <laughs> like some people <laughs> see me and they're like, I cracked it in 10 minutes, right? So, I mean, so I've learned that unfortunately I can't say anything. Can't right? give away anything. And I mean, honestly, I don't want to overhype something before it's out too, sure. right? Like I don't want to... Uh, uh, at least I find as a fan myself, mm-hmm. like if I'm hyped on something for months and months and months, but by the time the thing comes out, it can't possibly meet my expectations. Sure. So um, we want it to be a little bit of a surprise. Okay. With the titles that you guys are bringing out now, such as I know that you guys just released the um, Bloodborne, uh, the new expansion mm-hmm. for it. Um, can you tell me about some of those new things that you guys are more excited about or uh, that people might be interested in knowing that maybe missed some of that stuff? Like, exa- for example, with the Bloodborne, what kind of e- expansion does that offer? What kind of gameplay does it offer? Or oh, what kind sure. Of new elements? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the, the, okay, the Bloodborne expansion is actually, um, uh, I'm trying to condense it because it has a long history. Okay. So the, the card game. Uh, I designed way more stuff for the card game than went into the box, right? Okay. Because by necessity, the box had to hit a certain price point in order sure. to be accessible to the market we wanted. Mm-hmm. So I had a bunch of stuff that I would have loved to add to the, the core box. Um, after that, I um, I actually co-designed the expansion uh, with a friend of mine, Chris Chung, who designed Lanterns. Um, okay. Great designer, really, really smart, promising young talent. Um, and I, what I with that one, I went... Uh, he was a fan of the game, so I was like, I asked him to come forward with a bunch of his ideas without looking at my at my stuff, okay. and um, to see what he would bring to the table. And then I went, put my old stuff back, and we sort of merged it together and uh, and worked on that. So just because I wanted a fresh take, sure. So it's half what exactly what you expect. It's more of the same, which one of the things uh, most people who played the game said they really wanted. I want more variety in the in the weapon cards. I want more variety in the items, more monsters, more bosses. It's got all that in spades. Okay. So ideally it's plug and play. You can mm-hmm. just take all the decks from the expansion, just throw it into the base game and just uh, and play and just have more variety. Um, and we want to put a couple of twists in, right? Okay. Dash of the unexpected, dash of the expected. So there's... Um, uh, there's new uh, runes, which are new player powers for okay. the game. That you, um, they're giant cards that literally give you a they um, they ratchet up the power level of the game a little bit, but mm-hmm. it's for everybody at the okay. same time. So because um, we made the overall the the power level, of the monsters went up a little bit. Oh and man, the, the game the game became a little <laughs> bit more dangerous. So we'll give the players a little extra power. But okay. the cool thing is also um, they drive you in a direction, right? So. Uh, it gives you a, it gives you we want to give you more of a sense of building a character right okay. so uh, like you know for example one of my favorite runes actually gives you whenever you deal damage to other hunters you deal an extra damage mm-hmm. so you actually well you it'll push you toward trying to collect stuff that'll actually knock other people out of the game and it really feels like you're role playing that character right so okay. like um, I call it the jerk rune I honestly don't even remember what the real name is <laughs> I just want to take I'm like I take the jerk rune right? <laughs> it's my it's my favorite one to play okay. but there's like um there's like 12 of them and there's they all have very very different play styles um and of course there's death tokens so the game um uh, ironically, one of the one of the f- piece of feedback I got the most of it were the people were saying, "I wish this game was harder." Okay, well, <laughs> here you go. The, every once in a while, the game's just going to punch you in the face, and now it's going to punch you twice. <laughs> um, nice. So now there's penalties for dying, um, okay. and um, the way that the game penalizes you for dying is to uh, in a it does it in a way that you can forecast, right? So okay. like when a monster comes up, they have each monster has. A number of different um, trophy types. Mm-hmm. So if you die to that monster, you get a de- you get a death token, and it, 
it covers up the top slot of that trophy type. Oh, wow. So when you're like, oh, I, I don't want to die to this monster, so I'm going to maybe play more conservatively on this turn, mm-hmm. it gives people a sort of a feel and makes people even more asymmetrically interested okay. in monsters. Right? Maybe cool. I want to get blood from this guy. Maybe I just don't want to die to him. Maybe I want to ignore that kind of thing. Okay. Neat. So what what other games are out right now that you that would be of interest for our viewers? So let's see. Um, this is the, so this is one where I'm going to expose my blind spot a little bit. Um, Castle Force coming. It's pretty cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, hmm? It's coming this month. By the time this hits the airwaves, you might be playing it. Um, <laughs> uh, it's super cool. Um, so Blue Moon City uh, by Reiner Knizia is going to is going to be coming out maybe in the next couple of months. Um, we have, uh, well, okay, technically we have Kick-Ass, but that's coming out for months. I think it's a few months from now. Okay. Um, Kick-Ass is cool. Um, it's, de- um, is designed by, uh, a number of Italian friends of ours. Um, uh, Yamar Hach is one of them and Maurizio. I'm going to butcher his last name. I apologize. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to say Maurizio. <laughs> um, the, um, and we've been developing in house for a while. Um, it's it's just a co- it's a cooperative superhero game where you have to balance the um, you have to balance the the uh, the uh, your fight against the big ba- stopping the big villains okay. plots and your own hot mess of a personal life. Okay, um, just like the comics. Yeah. So um, that I mean, so that's really cool, and it's mm-hmm. a, and it's a it's a pretty deep strategy game with simple rules. So you, um, it's 90 minutes worth of chunky, meaty play. Um, Dragon Castle just came out. That's one of my personal favorites. It's actually my favorite game by Horrible um, Horrible Games. Um, it's great. It's a, people call it the Mahjong game. It has mm-hmm. tiles that look like Mahjong tiles, okay. but it's it doesn't. Uh, it's actually a much simpler game than Mahjong. Oh, wow. It's a nice little um, uh, set, sort of set collection game where you, you, you pull Maj, uh, tiles from the center of the board in order to create this cool-looking castle. Um, and you can put little rooftops on it. Uh, you're doing it to score points, but it's got this such, I don't know, it's a nice zen, peaceful quality to it mm-hmm. with just the right amount of interesting and compelling decisions. Okay. And there's a number of little paths to victory. Uh, it's like a 30-minute game. At least I'm not sure what the actual print-to-play time is, but sure. it feels like a 30-minute game okay. with a lot packed into it. Um, really great game. I, I highly recommend it. Um, and the rest is just too far off in the future. Sure. Well, it sounds like you guys got a lot of exciting titles again this year coming out. So, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Eric, for taking me through this and giving us a little bit of insight about what Simon's got coming out. Oh, thanks, man. And Always good to talk to you. And definitely. I, I love talking with you about all this stuff. So, uh, stay tuned again, guys. We'll have more coverage throughout the weekends, covering all the new stuff. I'll try to get out a video tomorrow covering the new announcement as it comes out. And I'm sure you guys will see it on social media as well. And uh, until next time, thank you guys for watching. See you later. Ciao, ciao.